wherever people have lived for any length of time, you're going to have ruins. But in the Northeast, there's probably more than their fair share for only about 400 years of history. Probably because America's always been on the move. Below me are the ruins of an old mill. It was called Fletcher's Mill. And if you can see, we're talking about a major drop down into an old sluice way. And of course, we have a roaring stream behind us that was once dammed, not here, but up the river about maybe 500 yards, quarter mile. This, this is Powder Mill Brook. And interestingly, this has been used by the people of the region to create power since before the American Revolution. And it lasted for a long time. I mean, they were milling lumber, they were uh, milling flour, they were even doing gunpowder in the area, milling gunpowder. And uh, <laughs> the mill existed right through the 20s. It went out of business, and then the building still stood, though. And it could have been restarted, but along came the 1955 flood and took care of that. Some of the mill buildings are still being used as apartments. But the actual mill is gone, long gone. When you are in this area of Southwick, you're in an area that geologically is still part of that Connecticut River Basin. So what you're looking at is that uh, 250 million year old sandstone or brownstone that was so valuable through the 19th century. There were quarries all over. You can see brownstone all across that bank over there. And if we went and poked around, we could have a chance of finding some fossils. Dinosaur tracks even. This area is really good for them. But looking down below, you can see that river swollen by the range is really cranking along. Typically, it's only about a third that fast. And this is a perfect spot to build a mill. Of course, the mill needed a canal system to get the water from the dam to the site of the water wheels. And that's what this is. I did, maybe I didn't explain that enough. So what you had here was a series of sluice ways powering massive water wheels. There's a big water wheel right here. Smaller water wheels up there. And let's check out that sluice way. I can show you some new art. Zork 23. A little bit of spray paint, a little bit of know-how, and look what you get. Anyways, this is the old sluice way. You can see it was still being used when concrete came into play. You see the concrete foundation here. And concrete was used for water tight the situation. Notice the old safe that we have here. And you can see the original fieldstone sluice way above. I'm sneaking through these wild roses to get at something that I think is particularly interesting. Do you see it? There, actually used as the footing for what I can imagine would have been uh, a portion of the building that projected out over the mill. You can see the lower mill there with its sandstone footing up against the river. You see that? There's an original grindstone. How neat is that? Archaeological find right here. You can see one of the channels where the um, the wheat would have come out. Probably find some residue in there if you look. And if you look underneath, you can even see the channels that are ground. 
I don't know how good you can see that, but there are some channels that are ground in there. That's pretty neat. A portion of the original grindstone broken in half. Must have been a little accident. Wonder where the other half is. Probably find it if we look around. You can see the concrete was used to shore it up and uh, down here we can have we can see one of the sluice ways here to bring water down to another set of wheels you can actually still see some bricks on the top of that abutment down there you know they didn't really take a lot of pictures of the workings of these mills. I think they were, they just looked at them as, yeah, it's a mill. You can see here is the canal, and it's coming from the other side of that, what would have been a storehouse right there. Water comes through there and then down through here, powering the mill. Doesn't look like we're going to find the other half of that grindstone. I imagine it's here. I can't see anybody taking it. Although people like to put them in their front lawns. Have you noticed? All over the Northeast there's grindstones in people's front lawns. Which I think is kind of cool. I'd like to find myself a grindstone that I could easily get into my front lawn. Not bloody likely though. Oh! Here it is! I'm standing on it. Wow, I walked right over it earlier and I didn't even notice it. You can see it projecting right there. There's the other piece. Piece one, that's only a quarter of it, so... Oh, look it. Piece one, I think that's piece two right there. So, cool. They used it in the foundation here of the higher canal that brings water down. for the milk. Quite a complex. But like I said, they didn't take a lot of pictures of the actual workings of the mill. Check out that safe. Look at that. Must have kept money in there. Maybe Al Capone kept something in there. Check that out. And look at that brickwork here. Well, it's not brickwork. Stonework. And they used cement kind of waterproof it but you can see that this is that brownstone that uh, the valley is so famous for and that make up the entire wall of the gorge on the other side of me and I'm sure under my feet as well so pretty cool here's the uh, Fletcher's Mill they called it in all of its glory and it's really cool to bang around in the ruins of the past here in the Northeast. And I'm guaranteeing you that you got one of these in your backyard. If you go to a river, you'll find it. There are rivers in Western Mass where there are literally dozens of old mills on the banks of the river.